Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Those of you that are returning subscribers to the channel, you will notice that I'm in a completely different room. I have since moved house and I have this new office. It's not fully set up yet, but I'm prepping it for videos and to create a lot more content from it here. But today I kind of wanted to answer the question, are fake grips any good? Now, for those of you that follow me on Instagram, you'll have known for a while that I have been using the Golf Pride MCC Align grips. Now, I had these in a standard size and they have been worn. And you can see on here just how well they had been worn to a certain point there that there was a thumbprint on them. As we all know, in the world at the moment, there is a grip shortage. Grips are almost impossible to come by. I couldn't get a set of grips. I only need 10 and I couldn't get a set of them for about five weeks, which unfortunately takes me to after my trip to Spain. And that got me thinking, well, if I can't get the real thing, are the fake ones worth purchasing? So I made a trip onto eBay and I'm gonna show you guys what I bought. I am obviously very lucky. Having done my PGA training and just knowing how to take grips on and off, I've been doing it for years, I can do this and it doesn't really cost me anything apart from buying the grips and a little bit of time. So I wanted to do this so you guys at home don't have to and don't have to potentially make the mistake or can I advise you guys actually that they're all right and maybe they're worth buying? Who knows? Right, let's get into the video. Okay then, so we have the real grip here laid on the table. You can see it's got a bit of a mark here where I've cut it off. I have just taped it together on the back so it looks a little bit shiny in this midway down. It is just tape. It's just to hold it together so you guys can see the font a little bit better, but then also the actual grip. So yes, it is worn. Uh, obviously that is gonna show up compared to the new, uh, the new fake one, however, that is the main grip there. I'm gonna leave it there to have in view while I now bring in, so this is on my seven iron. This is the fake grip. So actually on first impressions, it looks similar. The main thing that really stood out to me when I opened the box was just how obvious the actual cord is at the top. I say cord, there is no way that is actually cord. That is most definitely drawn on. But say first impressions of the grip, if you didn't know, it doesn't look far off at all compared to the real one down there. But let's just go through some of the main differences then visually that I saw. So one of the first things I noticed is say, was this cord. The cord is so much heavier in the fake compared to the real. If I turn the reel over, you can see how it's just sort of dots of cord this one really, really heavy all the way around. Second for me was the actual color of the line on the back, much, much lighter on the fake one. And then also the way that on the real one, I mean, this real one is on the bottom here is four years old and you can still see the tread lines there in the actual grip. But when we look at the fake one here, you'll notice that those tread lines aren't really there as well. Certainly nowhere near as defined. One of the other things that I really noticed was just the quality. So if you look at that grip, the red is in the red. The white surrounding is nice and clean. One of the things I noticed with this one, how the red overflows on the actual grip. Then I started to go into slightly finer details. So we start to look at things like the font. So the font on there you can see is quite a round curvy font. And then on the actual one, much more angular compared. Uh, the crosses in here, these have the little lines on them. This one here also has the little lines, but you'll notice they look a lot less like crosses. They're just a slightly different shape, much thicker center line, much smaller little side lines, whereas those actually do look like crosses. As we've then got the font on the front, the font's much bigger on the fake, which is surprising. Uh, and then also sort of the P looks a little bit deeper, but also the quality around that you can see it on the fake one there at the top, how the P is just different. And I've just noticed as well on here, the align is red and on there it isn't. So just another really small point. One of the things that is significantly different with this grip is it's a mid-size. So that does mean obviously it's larger, but you'll notice how the ring is much, much further uh, on the outside on the real one compared to the fake, so a real difference. I'm just gonna grab another fake one now and let you see the difference of these side by side, because actually, different grips in this, even the set they've sent me, vary. Something I noticed is just between the set, there are variations, so the actual color is changing quite significantly. So certainly, if I take away this five iron, these two match, this one's much lighter. So let me remove the five iron there out of the equation 
Now, can you start to see how the top one is ever so slightly lighter than this one? This is much, much lighter in these black sections compared to this. Uh, and I just found that really interesting that two grips from obviously the same manufacturer built in the same place and they are a different color. Uh, but I was quite surprised to see them changing color quite as dramatically. I've got a really good clip of this as well when I'm at the range, so I'll show you that. So I'm at the driving range now then on quite a cold, wet day. And I wanted to kind of have these grips on the range. I was intrigued to see what are they actually like to hit. Obviously we've had a look at them compared to the real ones, but what are they like to actually use? So I'm gonna hit a handful of shots. I have obviously already hit some with these uh, to warm up. And if I'm really honest, they don't feel too bad, but let's hit a couple with them now to see what they feel like. I've got flight scope running, you'll see on there. So let's just aim up towards that blue flag and just fire a couple away. So for me, one of the, the key things is I have gone larger in these grips than my previous grips. I've gone into a mid-size and actually the size feels great. I'm really surprised how they don't feel lumpy. You know, you'd expect something that's fake to not feel smooth. It feel like the rubber's not great. And that's not the case at all. It doesn't feel lumpy. It feels very nice actually along the actual grip. One of the things I have noticed, it feels a lot rougher than the real grips. And I'm gonna assume that that's the only sort of grip it's giving me. With that detail that I was saying with the cord being painted on, it's really just the rough rubber. And my guess is that's probably gonna get very smooth very quickly compared to an actual real grip that's gonna last probably a little bit longer than this. But overall, I mean, considering they're brand new, they feel okay. It'd be interesting to review this in a month's time. I'm not gonna have these grips in a month. I'm actually cutting these off. I have got some real ones that have now arrived that I am actually putting on my clubs. It's purely done this for this video. One of the big things I would say compared to my real ones, this line on the back really isn't pronounced at all. It feels very, very round. There's no real sort of pronunciation of the line. I can't feel that in my fingers like how you'd expect to. The real one I know pops out quite nicely. I can't feel that with this. But overall, I mean, it's perhaps if you didn't know, as in you didn't research it, maybe you wouldn't know if they're fake or not. Certainly if maybe you didn't know what you were looking at. I think for me, there's a couple of real telltale signs. Now one of the big things is, since I've been hitting shots with this, I've found the grip feels a bit sticky. Uh, certainly in the midsection between the, the black and the white, it's starting to go quite sticky. And I'm assuming that's me starting to wear the grip away already. And I'll show you the marks on that in just a moment. But the quality on that part of the grip in particular isn't great. And actually it does look like it's wearing down already. And it, it's not a nice sticky. It's almost like the grip's slightly wearing down already, which as I say, I've probably only hit 20 balls with this seven iron in total. Uh, and I'll just show you these little marks. I'll give you some close-ups so that you can see it. So I just wanted to go a little bit more into detail about what I said at the range, where I started to feel some sticky bits and the quality starting to deteriorate. So when we look at the grip, it's already started to mark in here. And you can see this section of the grip there has already started to degrade. And then I have a big white splodge coming through here. I don't know what that is. And again, I've got the same here. I've already got wear marks. And say I've only used these sort of once 50 maybe balls or so at the range, no more than 50 balls. And they are already starting to deteriorate. You can see up here, the cord colors sort of going. This is all worn, this is worn here. So let's try and start up then in as few words as I can and as quickly as possible. So I would always try and buy the legitimate grips first. Obviously, there is a grip shortage at the moment. So does that mean that you should go down the fake route or should you just buy a grip that is legitimate but the same price as the fakes. For me, I would personally avoid these fakes altogether, unless it's like some weird flex on your friends, but I don't see why a golf grip would be that, and that would just be really odd. I would say no if you're trying to do that. Uh, if you're trying to think about different size of grips, again, I really wouldn't bother. I'd just buy the legitimate thing. They're about six pounds if you're going for a tall velvet. Get one of those in a midsize. The key thing is with these actual grips is they last. And I'm just looking at those grips now and thinking, they're not even gonna last me a season. And actually costing me what they've cost me, that's not cost effective at all. I'm better off buying a six pound grip and making it last all season without any issues. Whereas that survive one range session is already struggling. So I think 
Personally, for me, I would say don't do it. Just don't, just don't buy the fake grips. It's not going to make you play any better having real grips compared to fake grips. I'm, I'm not an idiot, but I think in terms of just for your wallet and actual how long they're going to last and how they feel, I would say get the real ones. They're not expensive. I regret these already. I can't wait to cut them off and throw them all in the bin and then have my real ones on again soon. I will probably revisit this if they're still on after Spain, which I think there's a chance they will be. So I will then probably do a video after these if they start to perish on their review and how they get on in the warm weather as well, because my guess is these are going to be absolutely terrible. So, oh well, I can blame my bad golf on my grips. <laughs> Guys, thank you much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, I've got lots of new content coming up as they want them in Spain. Plan is to film as many videos as I can over there. I've also got some exciting content coming this year. I've got a couple of brands now that said yes to me reviewing some of their equipment, which will be fab. So really looking forward to kind of getting stuck in with the review side again. Thank you much for sticking with me in 2022 and I look forward to seeing you all very soon.